ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد اخوتي في الله اخواتي في الله فاعلموا ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد <coughs> the brothers جزاهم الله خير requested for me to speak about a subject that is very crucial and sensitive at the same time if it's not coming from the heart may not reach we will not I'm a guarantee you will not reach the heart of the others and I don't know if I'm that person if I'm the person who's qualified to de- to deliver this particular talk about the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam كان احد العلماء some of the scholars of the past له ولد يا رسان and this son was a alim ahkam al-shari'a halal al-haram sunnah and bid'ah fiqh and aqida and he was very at the same time very very good speaker excellent speaker and he used to come with force and energy to the masjid and address the crowd and talk to them about jannah and jahannam and taqwa and righteousness and how people should fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one would move no one will cry and then his father comes this old man simple man and as soon as he says ya ayyuha an-nas ittaqullah oh people fear allah فَكَانُوا بَيْنَ بَاكٍ وَمَغْشِيٍّ عَلَيْهِ There will be one of two men. One that is crying out of the fear of Allah or a person who already fainted from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the son came to his father and he said, I talked to them. I talk to these people and I tell them of a jannah and jahannam and they don't move. But as soon as you say ittaqullah, fear Allah, they cry. Why? And you know what the father said? He said if this is not coming from the heart, you will not reach the heart of the hearts of the others. And this subject is very sensitive because we want to learn apply how to love rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when i say learn i don't mean just read about it but i mean practice if i give you an analogy Think about this. 
what would you do if you were giving this ten young men, all of them tall, strong, healthy, fit, the shortest is 6'6", six, six, and the tallest is 7'2". And all of them can run. No fat or cut. All muscle. You put them in a room. And you bring the best coach ever. And you educate them about basketball. And you say when you jump, you got to balance yourself. When you move, you make sure you keep your eye on the other player. On the free throw line, when you throw the ball, you don't look at the rim, but you look back behind the rim. And do not be distracted by the people behind the rim who's trying to, for, to confuse you. And you teach them everything that they need about the bas- about basketball game. Everything that they need about it. And you bring this team... And you also educate them what they need to know about other teams. And you tell them, if the other team have shooters, then don't play, don't play zone, but play man. And if they cannot shoot, play zone. And you give all this information, all this information about basketball. And you keep it for four long years. Nothing but basketball. But you did not allow them to be in a basketball court. Not a single time. They never touch basketball in their life. And you say, now we're going to play the game of our life. We will play with one of these teams, the worst team of NBA, Raptors, you know, the worst team ever, you know, in case. And you say, now we're going to play them. Come on, let's play. And you put these people who have everything a basketball person may have. Height. Strength, ability to jump, move, and you say, now play the game. Would they be able to defeat the Raptors? No. See, this is Islam. This is what we are talking about. It's not how much we know, it's what we can apply. See, if you go back and say, I want to study the schedule of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many halaqa per week? How many lectures? How many conferences? You will only find that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to give two halaqa. One for the sisters on Mondays. One for the brothers on Thursday. And Friday will address them both. That was it. Nothing else. He would not say, let us go ya sahaba. Let me put you in a small room and let me read the Quran from cover to cover and let me explain the Quran to you and let me give you the tafsir of the Quran. Never that, that Rasul never did this. Why? Because Islam is not what we know and how much we know, it's what we practice and how we apply. And this is what we're missing. I will never come here thinking that I will introduce something new to you. I will tell you today, this is halal, you never knew. Apply it. This is haram, you never knew. I stay away from it. Abstain from it. I will never do this because you know, and I know, that we all know what is halal and what is haram. But we don't apply it yet, And this is where the problem is. This is where the problem is. So Rasulullah was more concerned teaching these people how to live Islam than teaching them how what to know about Islam. We all take notes. We all listen to uh, DVDs or watch DVDs and listen to CDs. We all read books. But how much of that is in our lives? That is the question. And therefore, I can stand here and talk to you about how to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what does it mean to love Rasulullah? But unless you try it, and unless you implement it, and you practice that, you will never understand. You will never understand. And this is what we're missing. So you have to understand, if you want to love this man sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
Learn to apply. Learn to apply His life. In any stand, in any position. If you are a father, He was a father. If you are, if you are a husband, He was a husband. If you are a brother, He was a brother, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In any position that you may play in your life, you have a role model in Rasulullah. لذلك الله يقول لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة. You can never say, "Well, I'm a politician, therefore Muhammad has nothing to do with me." He was a politician, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He dealt with the Quraysh. He's the one who was writing contract. I'm sorry, asking Ali to write the contract on behalf. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and try to come and make a deal with the Quraysh. He did that. He was a politician. He was a leader. He was an imam. He was a mufti. He was a student of Jibreel alayhi salam. He was there in every way in our lives. All we need to do is learn and apply. And the second thing that you need to know about this man is that he really cared about you. He did. See, the saddest part is, when you have someone who really loves you, you know, or someone that you love, but they don't share the same feelings with you. I mean, it's sad to know that this person loves you, but you don't love that person. It's sad to know that this person, you care about that person, but really, he doesn't care about you. That hurts. And imagine your spouse. Imagine your husband or your wife. That you care about them, but they really don't care about you. They know that you exist. They know that you're there. They know that every single night, every single morning they see you. But they really don't have, they don't feel the same way about you. And this man, he loved us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we don't have the same feelings towards him. We don't. Otherwise, all of us, we would try to look like him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We would know what type of meat, what part of meat he would eat. We would know and do exactly the same that he did in everything that he did in his life. And he said to the Sahaba, don't worry. I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Come and see me. I mean, subhanAllah. He was also he concerned that when you come to Yawm Al-Qiyamah, don't be confused, don't get confused. Don't worry about it. Just ask about my hope. And you will find me there. And he said, and I will provide for you. I will give you the water from the house. That if you drink from it, you will never go thirst ever in your life. Ever in your life. He's giving us this information so we can, you know, look forward for that moment. He's the one who used to sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At that particular time, when we all know the, uh, the, the direction of the house. And we walk into the house. Then the malaika will come and will take some of us away from that. And he, at that time he will fight for us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he will say, Ya Allah, inna min ummati. Oh Allah, they are for my ummah. And then he was, they were said to him, Inna ka la tadri ma ahdathu ba'dak. You know what they did. You don't know. What they did after you left Ya Muhammad. You don't know how they, how they lived their lives. You were not part of their life. You were just that image, that figure. And they can say, I found that man. But there was no connection between you and them. And he will say, I will say to them, Woke to you, I will think that you did. And concern, an Arabi comes. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm going, I'm leaving right now. What can I find you if I on the day of Yom al Qala fi mara fi manazi al-arba. Wa fi riwayah, you will find me in three places or four places. Inda taqayir al-suhf. 
When the people are receiving their books with their right hand or left hand, I will be there for you. I will make sure that no one will do you wrong. And Allah is a bit of a and no one will do him wrong, but maybe he's there for more support. I will be there for you. And he says, Allah alayhi wa sallam, in the Nizan, I will also be there for you. And he says, Allah alayhi wa sallam, and my how, I will be there for you. And the fourth place, and the Sirah, when we're crossing the Sirah, he said, I will be there for you. And make the I will be, Allahumma save my Ummah. Oh Allah, save my Ummah. Oh Allah, save my Ummah. If you don't have the same feeling about Him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how are we going to learn how to love? We won't. I mean, He did everything. One of the, one of His servants, he comes in the morning. فَقَالَ أَوْحَشْتِنِي يَا رَسُولُ الله وبكى. And he said, رضي الله عنه, رضي الله عنه, يا رسول الله, I missed you last night. And he cried. قال لي هذا تبكي, are you crying because you missed me last night? He said, that is not all, يا رسول الله. I thought about my place in Jannah, and your place in Jannah, and I realized, in Jannah, you will be in Firdaus al-A'la, but I don't know where I'm going to be. And he only missed him, he couldn't see him for one night, and he cried for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many times and he and I really cry? For the fear that we, we will be in Jannah and we will be in Jahannam. For the fear that we will not see him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you never cry for that, there's something strong with Iman that you're carrying in your heart. There's something is wrong with us. If the thought of that I'm not going to see him sallallahu alayhi will not make you cry, then your heart and my heart are dead. There's nothing there. I mean this man sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for every moment of his life, he was concerned about you and how we can reunite in Jannah. And he would say, don't do this. Because whoever does this is a way, does this is a way for me in the, in the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah. And do this, so you can be close to me on the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah. Have better akhlaq, have good manners, so you can sit next to me. And don't have nasty manners, otherwise you will be away from me. He wants you to be with him, but we don't want to be with him. He loves us, but we claim that we love him. So like that basketball players. Never touch basketball, never put in practice. Never went to basketball court and took and take a, took a shot on the rim, and we all claim that. Subhanallah, it's a difference, ya ikhwati fillah, and this is the problem. And as long as we have that, then we will not go far. And the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam listened to the Sahaba, and as I said, I will never bring anything new to this deen because. What I know is what you know. But Allah يقول فذكر فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين فذكر يا محمد remind them indeed a reminder will benefit only the believers. If your قلب is ساهي اللهي في كل واد يهيم If your heart is elsewhere then you should know maybe the level of iman in your heart is very low. لأن الله يقول فذكر remind him that remind them يا محمد فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين. If this reminder would not benefit you, then you should know you may not be a mu'min والعياذ بالله. You may not be a mu'min. Remember when Abd al-Rahman bin Auf first time that the uh, the Muslim army will count the will, will count the Quraysh of Mushrikin of Quraysh. First time, and Abd al-Rahman bin Auf Standing between two little kids, two young boys. فَيَقُولُ قُلْتُ فِي نَفْسِي I said to myself, I said to myself, I wish they had a strong man on my right, or on my left, who can defend. And he said, before I finished that thought, this young man, he grabs me from the side. فَيَقُولُ يَا عَمَّا Do you know Abba Jahl? Do you know Abu Jahl? He said, what do you want from Abu Jahl? قَالَ وَاللَّهِ إِنْ رَأَيْتَ 
لا يفارق سوادي سوادة. He said, Wallahi, when I see him, my eye will not leave his eyes until one of us is dead. فإني سمعت إنه كان يؤذي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. And he didn't live there, this young man. But he said, I was told that this man used to harm and bother Rasulullah sallallahu And because of that, I want to kill him. And because of what he used to do at the time of Makkah, I want to do it for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قَالَ فَعَجِبْتَ مِنْ قَوْلِ I was shocked from the statement of this young man. And he said, I'm right. While I was still thinking about what he said, the young boy on the other side asked exact the same question. Boys, young boys. Nowadays our boys are concerned about other things. Who's winning this finals, NBA finals? They will tell you, you know, who is the best player? Who is this? Who is that? They will tell you. But if you say, write an email defending Rasulullah, one paragraph, he will say, I don't know what to do. How do I have to write that? Because they're not connected to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They're not. We never taught them that. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu. He said, I was so thirsty. And I got a container that contains milk. And I also knew that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was thirsty. So I ran to, to, to him, and I gave him the milk, and he started drinking from the milk until I was satisfied. Yeah, and he said, I felt that I drank the milk. Because he really loved Rasulullah sallallahu to the point that he almost felt the feeling that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was feeling at that time. That connection is missing. Without, in our lives, that is missing. When his, he came to the city of Mecca, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is addressing the Quraysh and he's saying to the people who used to torture his companions, the people who used to stone him sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the people who used to drag Bilal bin Rabah radiyallahu anhu, and he's addressing them, and he's saying to them, مَا تَظُنُّونَ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ بِكُمْ What do you think I would do to you? And all of a sudden, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, dragging this old man, very, very old man, and he says, Ya Rasulullah, this is my father, Abu Quhavam, he wants to take the shahada, and Rasulullah, out of respect for Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he said, why did you bother the old man? I would have come to his house. He said, no, no, Ya Rasulullah, he should come to you. He should come to you, you should not come to, come to a kafir. And then the old man accepted Islam. What a beautiful thing. When you save your father from a Jahannam, when your father takes his shahada, or the person is giving the shahad to your father, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he walked away with his father. And he sat, and he sat crying, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And the people said, Ya Abu Bakr, this is al yawm al nasr Today we are victorious. We came back to the city of Mecca. And your father also accepted Islam. Why would you cry? He said, I wish if this old man was Abu Talib. Not my father. I would not care about my father. If Abu Talib was alive. He said, because I know that would please Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa more than anything else. Yani, he was willing to throw his father into Jahannam for Abu Talib to accept Islam. And to be in Jannah because that would please Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more. Would you do that for Rasulullah? Yeah. Would you really, with our status and our lifestyle that we live, 
We, how many of us would say, I will sacrifice, I will kill my father for Rasulullah to save a kafir related to him from a Jahannam? Not too many of us. Because we are missing something. See, ikhwati fillah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought the Sahaba and he told them, live an Islam. Don't learn about it. Don't know about it. Live an Islam. I will conclude, ya ikhwati fillah, the famous story of Bilal bin Rabah, radiyallahu an. Bilal bin Rabah, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away and he died, he left the city of Medina. You know why? Because he said, I could not stand the city of Al Medina without Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I could not live in the city. I could not live in the city because Every street will remind me of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every other wall will remind me of him. Every corner of the city will remind me of him. I could not stand. And he goes to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And he said, Adhinni ya Abu Bakr. Give me a permission for me to, be, to move away from the city of Medina. Qala woman yu adhinu lana. Who else will call the adhan for us? He said, look for someone else. Look for someone else. And he said, but we want you here. And he looked at Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. فَقَالَ يَا أَبَا بَكْرِ إِنْ أَعْتَقْتَنِي لِنَفْسِكْ فَأَنَا هَا هُنَا He said, يَا أَبَا بَكْرِ If you feed me for yourself, I am still your slave and I'll stay. But if you feed me for the sake of Allah, let me go. And he let him go. And then he decided, radiyallahu an, to come back to visit the Masjid al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa And then he went to the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he looked at the house of Aisha. We always used to come through that rawdah, smiling at Bilal, saying to Bilal, arihna biha ya Bilal, comfort us with the salah ya Bilal. And he cried. And while he was crying, weeping, فَإِذَا بِالْحَسَنِ وَالْحُسَيْنِ And Hassan and Hussein, they came. They came to the masjid. And he started crying more because Rasulullah loved them. Radiyallahu anhu majma'een. And then, they, he hugged them both. And he started kissing them both. Radiyallahu anhum. And then they said, Ya Bilal, Bilal, just one last adhan for you to remind us of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just one last adhan. And then, radiyallahu anhu, qala idhuruni, allow me, please forgive me, I cannot call the adhan. He say, just one last adhan. And then one of the people said, huma sibtai rasulullah. They are the grandchildren of Rasulullah. Call the adhan for, for, for their sake. And he went to call the Adhan. Allahu Akbar. And I can see, I can imagine the people of Medina, women, children, men, everybody came out of their houses. The people in the marketplace, they stopped selling and buying. Because they heard a voice that is familiar, who will remind them Muhammad, about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the people of Medina came some of them were hoping that Rasulullah will really get up from his grave. And Abu Bakr is Siddi Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu anhu. He could not hold himself. I mean, we, we can never relate to that. Why? Because we live a different lifestyle. We can never relate a man trying, dragging himself Dragging himself to the masjid to see where the voice is coming, hoping that Rasulullah will just get up. You know, magically just get up and say, I'm back. You know? And the people of Medina never cried like this 
from the dead Rasulullah died sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Never cry. 